Not so long ago, I took part in my first ever gravel race and absolutely loved it. But after having some time to reflect, I have learned quite a few things and a few tips that if I'd have known before the race would have definitely helped me. So in this video, I'm gonna share them with you. Let's go. First up, tyres and tyre pressure. For anybody doing their first gravel event, I would definitely recommend doing some research into the course. I was lucky enough to be able to go down and ride the course the day before, so I had a good idea of what kind of tyres I was gonna need. My race had a lot of compact gravel and sand, so I knew these wider, slicker tyres were gonna be perfect for the job instead of the narrower, knobblier tyres. But if you can't get to the course and ride it the day before, you can always look at or pictures from the race or maybe a video or take a quick look on maps or commute. Next up, tyre pressure. I went with 30 PSI for the race and not gonna lie, that sounds like absolutely nothing to me coming from a track cycling background where we pump our tires up to 200 PSI. But I actually think I could have gone a tiny bit less pressure because on the grassier sections of the course, it was pretty bumpy and all those vibrations going through my hands and my arms, I think I'm just a bit too soft. So make sure you do your research on the course and make the right call on tire choice because once the race starts, you can't change your tires or put more air in them. You probably take some air out, but that requires stopping and you don't want to stop. Next up is bike choice. Now the very kind people at Kona sent me two bikes to choose from, the Rove and the Libra. Some of you guys that ride off-road might be familiar with the Kona as they are pretty big in the mountain bike world and know a thing or two about making off-road bikes. It was quite a tough decision to choose between these very beautiful gravel bikes, but it ultimately came down to the handlebars. So on the Libra, there are a pretty wide set of handlebars, which are great for the technical sections of the course. There wasn't that many techie bits on the course I was racing on. So I went for the Rove, which had a slightly narrower handlebars, which were great for the fast terrain I was faced with. The Rove also has flared handlebars, something you often see on gravel bikes, but I'd never actually used the flared bars before, but I was very impressed. It gave a very relaxed feel when riding on the fast fire roads. I did run slightly different measurements on this bike than I normally would on my road bike. I came higher with the handlebars and a shorter stem. This was because it's a lot more comfortable position to be in when spending a long time on the really bumpy gravel sections where there's a lot of vibrations going through your hands and a lot of pressure. And it's also a little bit better for handling. I had big plans to be well fueled for this race. I took plenty of gels and food in my back pocket. How much did I eat? Yeah, just, just the one gel. I was constantly thinking in the race, man, you need to eat, you need to drink. But when you're hanging on to wheels, going over seriously bumpy terrain, and you've had, you're going so hard in the race, you feel a little bit sick from the effort. The last thing I wanted to do was eat. And yeah, I seriously did pay for it in the last lap of the race. I hadn't been training anywhere near enough for this race. So I knew I had to be well fueled to do well and get round in the race. And it does sound easy. Oh, just, you know, in the race, just have a gel or have a bar. But when you're hanging on to the wheels, your heart rate's sky high, it's not so easy. But it is something I'm definitely going to practice for next time I come to do a gravel race. Because in my case, the race was only 70 kilometres. God help me if the race was 170 kilometres and I wasn't fueled. I'd probably still be out there. My gravel race was on laps of 23 kilometers, but a lot of events can be done from point to point. Now this hadn't even crossed my mind, but when I got to the start, most people had spares in their back pockets or in a saddlebag. This is definitely something I'm gonna do next time because I don't wanna be that person stuck out there with a puncture with no spares and have to do the walk of shame back to the race HQ. The so all you need to take is some basic spares, a mini pump, a tube, and some tire levers. It might cost you the win having to stop, but at least you'll get to the finish. <music> Turn 
turns out gravel races, they start pretty rapidly and I probably wasn't as prepared as I could have been. I had a little ride round beforehand, I think it was five, ten minutes of riding around, loosening the legs off, but I would definitely recommend doing a little bit more than I did. Going out for 15, 20 minutes, doing some warm-up activation efforts, so you get to that start line and you're prepared for a fast start and give yourself the best possible chance. So they are some of the things I learned from doing my first ever gravel race. If you're looking to enter your first gravel race, make sure to take those things into consideration so you don't make the same mistakes I did. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up.